it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. So today I have for you two videos. I'm going to tell the story of the wild swans, a short synopsis, um, and then I will break the two video out, uh, videos out. So there will be the same description at the beginning of these two videos. So if you want to see the walkthroughs of these two journals, and you've already listened to my story from the first one, just kind of speed ahead a little bit so that you get to the walkthrough portion of the next journal. Um, I just didn't want to tell the story too times. <laughs> so let me tell you quickly um, the story of the wild swans by Hans Christian Andersen. This is just a quick synopsis. Um, so it's the classic tale of a king bringing home a new queen who doesn't want to be involved with his children. So he has a daughter, Eliza, and 11 sons. She immediately, you know, begins to try to find ways to get rid of these children, not to share her time with the king with them. And um, she enchants Eliza to look completely different. Um, and she enchants the boys to become swans by night, or uh, day, sorry, by day, and boys by night. So essentially they all get ridiculed out of the castle. She enchants the king to turn against them and they have to kind of fend for themselves. So the boys get driven away by like, you know, wild, you know, men with cannons and guards. And so they have to fly across the ocean to find a new home. Eliza basically runs out into the woods and time passes and she befriends some woodland animals and you know they all they all find new lives and every year the boys come back to the castle and they fly around the tower under gunfire trying to see if they can find their sister but they don't find her. So one day, um, Eliza, who's like living in a cave with some woodland creatures, some wild pigs, all of a sudden the wild pigs come running into the cave and essentially tell her that, you know, they're under fire from um, like a local prince who is out hunting with his... Um, you know, his, his men. And so they're shooting at the pigs. And so she goes out to confront them and, um, you know, gets rid of them. And then as she's out, she sees a deer that's injured by an arrow. So she tries to go to the deer to help it in some way, but it runs away and it goes to this lake. And it's basically an enchanted lake. And she sees the deer jump into the lake and then re-emerge as like a brand new, younger, perfect deer. And so she thinks to herself, maybe if I jump into the water, I will be reborn into my original self and I'll, I'll you know, look like I used to. Um, and my family will recognize me. But she's too scared to. So she doesn't. And some more time passes. And then one day, as the swans are flying overhead, they see this little beggar girl, essentially, um, in the woods. And um, one of the brothers confronts her and finds her. And... Um, they they start talking and she tries to tell him that, you know, I'm your sister Eliza, but he doesn't believe her because who he's looking at looks nothing like his sister. So she bravely decides to prove it to him by finally taking that leap of faith and jumping in the lake. So when she does that, she reemerges looking like Eliza. Um, and then, you know, they they try to find ways to bring her to where they're living across the ocean. But it's hard because they have to do like a layover in the middle of the ocean on this tiny rock in order to spend the night there because they're only swans by day. So if they risk the daylight coming, then they turn into boys and they would drown in the ocean. So they didn't have a boat. They didn't have anything like that. So they build this net and they carry her over. And essentially a whole bunch of stuff happens in the middle. There's like a, a fairy godmother. There's a bunch of things. But then eventually Eliza meets up with that prince who had been hunting and he is immediately in love with her by her you know basically by her looks <laughs> and so um but she doesn't speak and so the reason why is um at some point during this um trip back over the ocean the original evil queen finds out what they're up to and she again enchants Eliza and she she makes it so that Eliza is not allowed to speak um, or her brothers will die with one exception. She has to knit 12 
or sorry, 11 sweaters, one for each brother, out of stinging nettle. So she's not allowed to speak until she has completed these sweaters and put them on her brothers. Only then would they be transformed back into boys. But if she speaks before then, her brothers would die. So basically, she then meets up with this prince. He brings her back to the castle. She can't say anything to him. Then a bunch of ne'er-do-wells in the castle see her at night sneaking out of the castle and going into a graveyard to get stinging nettle. And so they immediately think she's a witch. She must be talking to spirits if she's leaving the castle at night. And what is her obsession with stinging nettle? So they lock her away in a tower. And, um, you know, basically they all they allow her is her, you know, basic food and her stinging nettle because she seems to love it so much they sarcastically say so essentially she toils away day and night and gets these sweaters done eventually meets up again with the swan brothers gets the sweaters on them and then finally she's able to bring them back to their form as men and then finally she can speak to her prince and then happily ever after happens pretty quickly after that <laughs> so these journals are based on the story of the wild swan. This is the story that I've told for the beginning of both of the videos um, and it is now at this point um, roughly around six minutes and 30 seconds where I will break out into two separate videos. So see you soon! Hello, just one little heads up before we get started in the flip through of this journal. In the flip through, you will not see these little gold corners that I added um, right after the video was filmed. I typically like to add these kind of corners just to strengthen the book um, if it's a particularly old book. So note that in the flip through you won't see them, but this journal does have these four gold book corners that are added on all four sides. Sorry about that and thank you. The first of the Wild Swan journals is made in a vintage book of the Trumpeter Swan by Temple Bailey. It is this beautiful burgundy book um, that has this incredible gilding. Um, I rebuilt the spine because it had a lot of wear. It's a very old book. So I've added some fabric to both sides and I've gilded it. Um, the top of this spine had been damaged. So I've added some gold lace behind and some fabric so that it will restrain in the spine. It's been fully rebuilt um, and I wanted to just try to keep as much of this book as I could because the gilding is just beautiful. So there we go. And then the back. The book has five signatures. The middle signature of both of these journals is actually the story of the wild swans by Hans Christian Andersen. So when you open the book up um, you will see there's a pocket here We'll take everything on out for a moment. So this is just um, an image of the castle. And then there's some botanicals in back. You'll see that there's this beautiful blue fabric that I've used to cover the spine on the inside. Inside the pocket, we have this, um, it's a simple large journal card. It is um, illustrated from the story of the wild swans. I've used probably four different versions of the story from different books that I collected for these journals. So this is a picture of Eliza in the net that they that the swans built that carried her over the ocean. So that just tucks right on in here. And this beautiful painting of a swan, a white swan. And then this is um, a book page from the story of the wild swans. It shows Eliza toiling away in the castle, knitting those um, sweaters. And there's just some nice lace down the side here, ribbon with some sparkle. Avocado dyed paper and just some kind of woodsy paper. Stenciling and lily pads and lilies. This side we have um, a book page pocket from the original book of the Trumpeter Swan. And inside we have the Wild Swans. This is from another version of the Wild Swans book. And it's just a journal card and pops right in here. Some more stenciling. And this is a flip out of the Swan Princes flying. And some nice botanical paper in green. I used a lot of greens and blues um, because it's reminiscent of both the ocean and the um, stinging nettle. 
And this is just, um, there's some book pages that I've used in here that I felt like they, they continued the story. So this could be Eliza, maybe with her doll, maybe when she, you know, meets the queen for the first time and is initially rejected by her some blue paper and then this is just some green um, cruel wool knitting that I've um, added as a belly band um, and I kind of purposely made it like a little bit um, it's soft to the touch but I wanted to make it look a little jaggedy if I could because can you imagine knitting with with um, stinging nettle <laughs> and inside is this painting of a black swan and it's a journal card you can just pop it right in there And on this side, we have these birds. They could be gooses, they could be swans, but they're from a storybook and I thought they were lovely. And then some more stenciling. And this is um, just some um, green plants and it says, you must twine thread and knit. And that's words from the original story. And this again shows Eliza in the net being carried by the swans. And then just some nice landscape lily pads and stenciling and some acorns avocado dyed paper with some ribbon and this is an Im these are both images from the um, original stories this is the swans flying over the town this is eliza sleeping out in the woods and some nice gilded ribbon coffee dyed paper and some green vintage wallpaper stenciling and a pocket here that says 11 shirts with long sleeves and it shows one of those shirts hanging there and Eliza sitting there knitting another one with all of this stinging metal around her and inside this um, pocket we have this uh, journal card I felt like that's also a great depiction of Eliza and perhaps another depiction of Eliza and maybe one of the boys the brothers and this is um, a vintage um, napkin some stenciling and then this is actually from another book called the swan children and it's just the body of a swan and then I put some map paper down here it's a good journaling space and then on the back we have an upper tuck pocket and below you can see this is actually from the book the swan children so it's a bunch of children very reminiscent of what all of the kids would have looked like together and then maybe another little depiction of eliza this is cabbage dyed lace paper and then here we have um, this image, which is Eliza basically in her prison. You see the, one of the swan's heads and you see probably one of the castle guards and someone grabbing at her and she has all these sweaters all around her. And then we see the swans flying over the ocean and then they are here again. And this is a little journaling card that says until the nettles become like flax and a girl walking beside the ocean. And this side we have a pocket made from the trumpeter swan original book. And this is um, an original picture from one of the stories of the, um, the, um, wild swans <laughs> and this is all of the boys standing on that rock that they had to stop at in the middle of the ocean 11 sons and one daughter and then just some nice green fabric and inside is this journal card it's actually of a mother goose but it looks like she's riding a swan instead of a goose and so I thought it was very appropriate for this book and then um, the reason that I have, you'll see in both books, I didn't give all of the details of the story because I don't want to ruin it for whomever may decide to pick this book up. Um, there's a rook or a crow featured in both of the books and that's because um, Eliza actually befriends um, a crow in the story who um, is kind of like sort of a mystic and also kind of a go-between between, between her and what's going on in the, in the castle. So you will see blackbirds in these books. And then this is a lovely little picture from another book um, of a swan going after a picnic basket and a little girl in the water there. It's just a journaling card. 
And on this side, we have two of the boys um, up on this um, this piece of this brick fencing. It's from another telling of the story. Some stenciling. And then this is a large journal card um, that's from an art book. And I felt like it just, um, there's more sort of old paper underneath here. I thought it just really kind of was a nice image for the book. It shows this like baby in this long kind of like a sheet type dress. It reminded me of the foliage of the swans as well, that it was a child. And it said the queen hated the children and it just shows this baby sort of flying over this dark, dirty city. Um, and that just clips on top here with a nice rusty paper clip. And then this is an original image from the book and it just shows um, this little house with these roses around it and then the swans flying above. And then this is the story of the wild swans. So each of these books have five signatures. The third signature is the story. So this one um, is the whole story. You will notice that it's clipped very, very close to the words, but they are not cut off. I had to clip it very closely though, because I needed it to fit inside the journal. So the whole story is there. Um, there there's nothing that's been cut. Um, then on the back of the story, I've added this pocket with some nice stitching, kind of like thinking reminiscently about the stinging nettle. And there's a little girl here amongst a bunch of white birds and inside is a journal tag made from the original story from a story box that I have of this story um, and it just shows Eliza with her pink fingers knitting away on that um, stinging nettle. This is a vintage napkin paper and on this side we have an upper tuck pocket of just this beautiful castle and inside is a journal card of Eliza and her poor little pink fingers and the, her swan brother visiting her and crying because she actually can't talk to him either because she's not allowed to speak until she finishes knitting all of these sweaters. And then this is a little image of these little kids and cabbages in this wagon and I just thought it was a nice uh, image because of all of the 11 children. You'll see the other side of it as we move along in the book. And then just some nice journaling space from book pages. And then this is a nice image of um, all of these birds and this sort of enchanted bird girl and I thought it was appropriate for this story some more cabbage dyed lace paper and then this flips out and it is a map this nice blue map and I thought it was kind of nice because it's reminiscent of like you know thinking about the ocean and all of the swans flying over the ocean and this is an original image from the story box of the book um, and it shows Eliza just completely surrounded in um, the stinging nettle putting the sweater on her brother and on this side we have um, a stinging nettle plant from a telling of the story. And then I made a journal card here that says, we do not have a ship or a boat and I cannot fly. So this is when they built the net to carry her over the ocean. And then this is from um, a field guide, swans. And I left the whole page there. It has some other birds um, mentioned, but they're beautiful birds. And I wanted to just keep all of that together because it talks about the different kinds of swans, mute, whistling, and trumpeter swans. And more map paper and this folded of Eliza with all of her brothers in their sweaters and the onlookers from the castle. And then just a lovely image of the ocean. And then just a green pasture, some green paper. And then this is a rusty paper clip holding this journal card um, that has this little poem on it that says, Upon the brimming water among the stones are nine and fifty swans, unwearied still, lover by lover, they paddle in the cold. Companionable streams or climb the air, their hearts have not grown old. Passion and conquest wander where they will, attend upon them still. And there's a black swan. And then this is um, some cabbage dyed lace paper and just some more journaling space and collage. 
And this is a page from a book of just a couple of little children. Again, sort of a story about the kids. And again, those little cabbage kids. <laughs> um, and then more of that lovely castle. And it's an upper tuck pocket that has this little booklet in it. So inside is writing space and on the outside we see um, the swans um, approaching Eliza for the first time um, when she's in the bush and she still like hasn't reconnected fully with her brothers yet. This is vintage napkin. This is an original image from the story of Eliza um, with one of the swans. And then just some stenciling of some bricks, thinking about the castle, and some green paper, thinking about that stinging nettle. And then we have a pocket here that says 11 wild swans wearing gold crowns. And this is when Eliza and the prince f finally get to sort of speak and meet and it shows the swans in the background. It's from the cover of the story box for this book and this is Eliza um, you know in the process of making all of these sweaters. Just a journaling card and then this is just a beautiful vintage dictionary page and some nice indigo dyed paper and on this side this is an image from the swan children and it's this beautiful painting of this girl and a swan. Coffee dyed lace paper. This is a book page of just a bunch of little boys again telling the story of the children. Um, indigo dyed paper. This is a depiction of Eliza from one of the stories with her stinging nettle there and a little butterfly on her bonnet. There's a swan in the background, a swan's wing. And then this is a journal card from another telling of the story and it shows um, the boys and it shows Eliza and the prince and the um, gathering the stinging nettle and building that net. And then these are just some nice big gray pansies and some stenciling more stenciling on this big fold out and so this fold out shows Eliza in her cave where she was living and then later on in the story it shows her with her brother and they're flying and then it shows her sleeping at night so just different points of her life and then this um, part of this side of the pansies I created a little tuck pocket there and this is the book plate from this original book, The Trumpeter Swan by Temple Bailey. I, I just like to keep a little reminiscent of the original vintage books that I use. This is a beautiful painting of a swan. And then this is just a side tuck pocket um, here. And you see a little toad there and some greenery. And this is from the this story box telling of the story. And then there's this journal card of, um, again, from the story box of Eliza and the Prince. And he's giving her a flower. And this is after, you know, she's been able to talk to him and tell him that she loves him. And then this is another book page. I thought it was a good depiction perhaps of Eliza being, you know, um, spoken down to by the men in the castle asking her why is she going out and collecting, you know, the stinging nettle in the graveyard at night. And then some coffee dyed paper. Another beautiful image of a swan. And just some more journaling space. And this is another of the pages from the original book, The Trumpeter Swan, that this um, journal has been created in. This has been clipped on with a rusty paper clip. It says, at dawn, the brothers became swans. It has one of the images from the original Wild Swans book and some lace. And it's just a journal card on top of this beautiful old dictionary page. Some nice script there and green paper. More of the castle bricks and some lace vintage wallpaper and at the back we have this um, pocket and it is a picture of a very tired Eliza being pulled over the ocean by the swans and there's botanical paper in behind with white flowers and inside we have this journal card from the story box of the book showing Eliza in her transformed form as kind of the beggar girl, um, the castle underneath and all the swans around her. And then we have the little note from the bookmaker from me about my journals um, and how to use them. 
And that is the end of journal number one, The Trumpeter Swan, the telling of the wild swans in journal form. So thank you so much for joining me for this one. Um, there is one other journal that I'm going to be doing another video about. And if you're going to watch it as well, you might want to skip through the first six and a half minutes where I tell the same story that you've just heard of the wild swans. Thank you so much. Have a great day.